number 141. confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above, or on the earth below, or in the waters beneath you. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep the holy, the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath 
of your Lord, your God. No work may be done than by either you, your son or daughter, or your male or female slave, or your beast, or by the alien who lives with you. In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, <clears throat> enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup, or honey from the comb. Lord, Lord you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume you. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? He answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. There once was a family who bought a house, and the house that they bought butted up against, the backyard of it butted up against a, sti a steep ravine. When the children of that family would go out and play in the backyard, they stayed relatively close to the house for the fear of the deep ravine. But after some time, the parents of the family built a house around the edge of the backyard where they went down into the ravine, and after which the children played freely throughout the entirety of the backyard. My brothers and sisters, in our first reading today, we hear of the Ten Commandments given to us in full as they were given to Moses. What we hear in the Ten Commandments feels like a lot of what we should not do. And oftentimes, as human beings, we do not like to be told no. But it is in the Lent season through our fasting that it is meant to correct our desires and to increase our hunger for the Lord and our dependence, to help us understand where we have sinned or where things might be going off the rail. And despite the very fact that, you know, when you think about the story of the children in the backyard, the fence there, we can think of that as the commandments that God has given to us, which allow us to live in the freedom of all that God has intended for us. God's commandments keep us from going over the cliff and also help us to live in the fullness of what God has to offer. God's commandments, like the fence, delineate a line between the sins of commission, things that we choose to do should we go over the fence, or out of fear or what have you, the sins of omission, the things that we neglect to do. And whether they are sins of commission or omission or through our fasting in this Lenten season, it highlights to us places in our life that perhaps things have gotten out of hand or out of order. And when we look at our scriptures this weekend, in addition to the first reading, I would like to connect that a little bit to the gospel today. And oftentimes that's not the case. In the Lenten season, we have a couple different tracks of our scriptures. And oftentimes the first reading is following a track that highlights various aspects of salvation history leading up to uh, Easter Sunday. And so, and the Gospels are on a different track. 
but perhaps there is a connection here, even though it may not be so readily seen. For we see in Jesus in the temple, he references when they ask of him, how can you destroy the money changer tables and shoo out everybody is there? He tells them that if they destroy his temple, that he will rebuild it in three days. Of course, they did not understand that Jesus was speaking about his body and a temple that is greater than anything that Solomon or Herod could have built. And in fact, the temple that Jesus was standing in, in that time and in that moment, of course, as scripture says, highlights that it had been under construction for well over 46 years. We recall as human beings that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, that is, our bodies, our dwelling, our dwelling places of God. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, as St. Paul says. And when we hear of Jesus flipping tables, maybe we want to ask ourselves, what was so disordered? What was so wrong that, he was, that um, this was going on? And far beyond just the fact that Jesus highlights that they were making the temple a marketplace. Because if we recall in scripture, it was part of Jewish prayer and sacrifice and atonement to offer up animals. And so many people coming to Jerusalem, and especially coming during Passover, would travel many miles. And so it'd be highly impractical to bring the goat or the lamb or what have you from your backyard thousands of miles all the way down to Jerusalem. And so to make it easy, convenient, to expedite things, they were selling animals for sacrifice. And even when Jesus is presented in the temple, we recall just after Christmas in the scriptures that Mary and Joseph offered two young pigeons or turtle doves. <clears throat> but what we have to understand is in the construction of the temple, especially in this time during uh, King Herod's reign, that what was most important here, why Jesus was a bit angry, if you will, or perturbed. He had zeal. I wrote my letter this weekend, zeal for your house will consume me. And in, in my pastor's letter, I talked about that because we do have to be clear that Jesus acted out of zeal. Certainly as a human being, we can feel the emotion of anger. But to act out of that anger, like if we were to lash out at someone, that is where it crosses the line, or goes over the fence, if you will, into sinful matter. And so why was Jesus so zealous about clearing out these people in the temple? What was so wrong and what was so disordered? Well, many scholars think in the construction of the temple, King Herod, especially in his time, and mind you, this is the same Herod that tried to put Jesus to death, and uh, also, I believe, killed his own wife and other things. So this is the same Herod who was barely a legitimate king at that and a very evil person. And so he's all, because of his insecurity, he's always trying to assert uh, that he is his legitimacy, to assert his place in history, and so on. And so in this time of King Herod, one of the things that he did was he continued to build upon and expand the temple worship space. And so much so, they made an outer court for the Gentiles uh, to pray. And pagans would also come and also worship God of Israel in the outer court. It is here that we believe that this is where the money changers and those who sold animals for sacrifice set up shop, if you will. And this is what made Jesus so perturbed or so ze zealous for the house of the Lord because to do so would make it hard for those who are coming to pray in the midst of things being sold. But I don't know about any of you, but I know when I, when I go to the grocery store or I'm in a long line somewhere, I might be praying. <laughs> go quick, go quick. <laughs> but it reminds us though too of what's going on in the temple is historically, even from what the prophet Isaiah had said, that Israel, although they are God's chosen people, would be a light and a way for all nations to come to God, for all nations to experience salvation, both if you were Jewish or pagan, who you brought to be brought to conversion. We hear uh, and we recall that St. John Paul II, the Great, had said, do not be afraid to follow Christ. 
I offer you to you this weekend as we continue our Lenten journey, do not be afraid to encounter Christ. For it is one thing to follow and another to encounter. This week, as we see Jesus cleansing the temple, and we reflect on our own fasting and where perhaps we have failed or fallen short to follow God's commandments that lead us to live in the fullness of God's love, perhaps it is that we are called to encounter Christ and to allow Jesus to flip a few tables in us to drive out that which has gotten in the way or that which does not belong, things that have gotten disordered. And so we, and it's important for us then also to be mindful of how it is that in doing so, to cling to the words of the Lord, to use them wisely. For as we heard in Psalm 19 today, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life, that the Lord's words are refreshing for the soul, trustworthy, and of giving wisdom. They enlighten the eye and then are enduring to the end. And so as we allow the Lord to encounter us, to flip a few tables so that we may live in the fullness of God's truth, his laws, and his ways of love, let us this week perhaps enter into a deeper time of an examination of conscience, to examine the commandments of the Lord, to see where the Lord is calling us to follow him more closely, where our desires may or may not line up with that. What word in the commandments stuck, jumps out to us? And may we allow our reflection of, and an examination of conscience upon God's word, may we allow Jesus to encounter us along this journey of faith, that he may drive from us all that leads us astray, and that the temples and the presence of the Holy Spirit that we are called to be, that we may be ordered for God's grace, the fullness of life within him, the new life that comes from the resurrection and salvation itself. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the Lord, we now present to him our prayers of intercession. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lead the church exemplify Christian simplicity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments and corporations commit themselves to justice for the poor and fair treatment for the vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer wars destruction, especially in religious conflicts, 
Enjoy prompt and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord that elect catechumens and candidates learn to love God's law, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly deepen their faith through service to the poor, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And that we may intercede for one another as we mention our many needs and intentions in the silence of our hearts. <coughs> We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your merciful love, we ask you to hear our prayers and to grant them according to your will. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second collection is for the outreach fund. Number 625. <laughs> sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the souls of the church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For you've given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that, freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Before his arms are outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race look kindly most compassionate father and those who unite to yourself by a sacrifice of your son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of the one bread and the one chalice they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then free at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dealer us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. With the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord with you all. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ Jesus.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Those taking the Eucharist to Hombach, please come forward. As you take the gift of Christ, those in need, show them of our prayers, our love, and our support. Um, as we do every other month, we take an opportunity to bless uh, those who are celebrating a wedding anniversary. Do we have any wedding anniversaries for March or uh, April in the, in the church tonight? Mm -hmm. All right, Bob and Barb, and anybody else? All right, how, how many years? 46. 46, all right. Just about as long as they were building the temple, 46. <laughs> we hope for many more than that. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have so exalted the bond of marriage that has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church's spouse. Look with favor on Bob and Barb, who have been united in Christian marriage. They ask for your help and protection, and we pray that in good times and bad, that they'll grow in love for each other, and that they will resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you're near to help them, and in their joys, let them see that you are the source and completion of all happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before our final blessing, just a few announcements. The first of which is uh, that there will be stations of the cross. Uh, it's coming Friday, March 8th. There'll be a 7 o'clock at the Nova site. Also, all are invited to participate in the choir for Holy Thursday Mass. There will be one practice on Sunday, March 17th at 7 p.m. here in Seville. And then also as far as uh, Holy Thursday, the Holy Thursday dinner, uh, you can start RSVPing for that either online or there is an insert in today's bulletin. And last but not least, on uh, this coming Wednesday, March uh, 6th, we will be having our first of three uh, Eucharistic evening prayers along with the soup and bread dinner. So right here in Seville at 6.30, we'll have evening prayer with Eucharistic adoration. It lasts about 25, 30 minutes and after which you'll have a soup and bread dinner. Uh, so if you're coming and you can bring soup or bread or both, that'd be greatly appreciated and uh, something to obviously share with all. So uh, join us this Wednesday uh, for evening prayer and a soup and bread dinner. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with the spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace that, abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, we are the angel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, rest in us, Satan.